عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رجلا قال للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أوصني قال لا تغضب فردد مرارا قال لا تغضب رواه البخاري يا نبي السلام عليك يا رسول السلام عليك يا حبيب السلام عليك صلوات الله عليك Welcome back Salam ibn al-Akwar After all of this effort he put into getting and freeing this herd of charity of zakat he met the prophet والسلام, and said O prophet of Allah give me few men and I will go and follow these people and annihilate them all and the prophet said وسلم, O Salama that you have conquered them so give them room at the moment they are in their tribe in Ghatafan and they're drinking milk now after all of this effort one would expect that Salama would take a camel or to mount on a horseback and go back to Medina it's a long distance he's been running fighting rescuing this herd for more than 11 hours imagine this endurance and this strength this stamina but not Salama may Allah be pleased with him on their way back one of the companions said, anyone would like to race me on foot to Medina? Anyone? Are you all afraid? He's challenging. And Salama said to him, don't you have any shame in you? Don't you expect these men to race you? I'll race you. I'll take you. Give me a break. After 11 hours, 10 hours, inshallah, 5 hours. You still have stamina to race, to marathon this man? And Salama says that we started running. And I was a bit behind because I wanted to keep air just before we see the outskirts of Medina. And he said, we're running, jogging. They didn't have any air in their feet. They didn't have any, you know, sneakers that would take them there. I don't know how they were running, but it was tough. And the man had the stamina to jog, to run. And he says, as we reached the outskirts of Medina, I put it all in. And I raced the man and until I came just behind him and I smacked him in his back. And I said, well, I've overtaken you. And he went. And he won. Whenever we read such beautiful stories, we know that this is an athlete. This is a sportsman not like one of those who is almost stripped naked swimming or jogging or doing whatever he's doing for the sake of a gold medal this is bravery this is what people should do for the cause of Allah not to boast about it not to brag about it and likewise Umar ibn Khattab may Allah be pleased with him his strength his power was totally devoted to protecting Islam Umar ibn Khattab, when he wanted to migrate to Medina, he did not do this in secrecy. He went to the masjid in full armor, and he addressed the dignitary of Mecca, the pagans. All of them were gathering in their tens and hundreds around the Kaaba, and he said, I am migrating to Medina, by the way, and whoever wants his mother to lose him, let him follow me. So if anyone would follow me, I would kill him, and then his mother would not have a son anymore. Look at this bravery. Look at this manhood. And no one dared to go after him. On the contrary, they thought that, let us get rid of him. He's a pain in the neck. We do not want to see him anymore. He's causing us more trouble than being away. Let him go. So. He left, may Allah.
with him. And during the 10 years in Medina, he had lots and lots in his hat. He did a lot to Islam and to the Muslims. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, when he was on his dying bed, he appointed him as a Khalifa, as a leader of the Muslims. And that is why he said that if I were to die, then Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, is to succeed me. He is the successor of Abu Bakr. And that is why he used to be known as Khalifa to Khalifa to Rasulullah, the successor of the successor of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The difference between his reign and the reign of Abu Bakr was that Abu Bakr's reign was only for two years and few months, a couple of months, while his reign was five times as big. It was about 10 years and a half. And that is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith, he said that while I was standing by a well, drawing water from it, Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, and Umar came. Both of them came. So Abu Bakr took the bucket and drew one or two buckets. But there was some weakness in his drawing, and may Allah forgive him. Then Umar ibn al-Khattab came, and the bucket turned into a very large one in his hands. I had never seen such a mighty person as he in doing such hard work till all the people drank to their satisfaction and watered their camels that knelt down there. So scholars interpreted this hadith to be of the great battles and conquest that took place in the time of Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. Abu Bakr only reigned for two years and few months. And that is why he had little time to manage, but he did a lot of things. He fought the apostates. He sent the army of Osama bin Zaid, may Allah be pleased with him, to the north. And he collected the Quran and compiled it. And he did a lot of things, but two years you could manage to do so much while Umar had 10 years and a half and that is why he managed to do a lot and that is what was meant by the hadith of the bucket becoming very large and the drawing of a bucket is very weak because he had little time that is why the Prophet said may Allah forgive him because this forgiveness means that his reign is very short and that he would die, may Allah be pleased, with him. Now, Abu Bakr did not want this world, did not want this life, and life did not want him. So, it was different to the reign of Umar. May Allah be pleased with him, because Umar did not want this life, but this life, this world, came crawling to him. In his reign, in his era, there were a lot of conquest and victories to Islam. And that what made the money pour into the treasury of the Muslims. Yet Umar was not changed by all of this. May Allah be pleased with him. Umar was a pious person. He was tough even on himself. He would not indulge in this life to the extent that he would be a slave of it. Didn't our Prophet say, alayhi salatu wasalam, ta'isa abdu dinari wa dirham? May the slave of dinar and dirham get no success. Why was that? Because if you're a slave of your wallet, if you're a slave of money, this is your driver. And this is what makes you do well or do badly but if you are a slave of Allah if you are a servant of the Almighty then Allah will make this world come to you crawling on its knees 
Umar may Allah be pleased with him, was a generous person. He was not as rich as the other companions, but he was generous with whatever he had. It was reported that the Prophet ﷺ once instructed his companions to come and give charity. So he came with half of what he owns. 50% of his possession brought it to the Prophet ﷺ as charity. The Prophet ﷺ on the seventh year of Hijrah gave him a portion of Khaybar. And this was the era where Allah Azza wa gave money to the Muslims. And this did not make him rich because he was rich by his spirit. He came to the Prophet and said, O Prophet of Allah, this portion, my share in Khaybar, is the most valuable thing I have. And I would like to give it to Allah and to the Prophet So the Prophet said, well, I'll advise you with a better advice. Take this and make it as a waqf. And maybe this transits to endowment. So make it so that it is not sold, it is not given, and it is not inherited. This is solely for Allah Azza wa Jal. And whatever comes from it, give it to the orphans, give it to the widowed, and give it to the poor. And so, he did, may Allah be pleased with him. And everyone knows that Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, was a strong person, not only physically, and not only in taking decisive decisions, but also he was strong in forms of worship. The Prophet وسلم, once in one night passed by his companions. And this was the habit of the Prophet وسلم. He used to pass by his companions to check on them if they were offering night prayer or not. This was reported when he visited his daughter Fatima and his son-in-law and cousin Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with them both. And by the way, Fatima is married to the cousin of the Prophet ﷺ, the first cousin, who is Ali ibn Abi Talib. And this is a clear evidence that in Islam, there is nothing wrong in marrying your cousin, whether it's paternal or maternal cousin. This is permissible for a man to marry his cousin, of course, a female cousin. In some countries, they think that a cousin is like a brother. It's forbidden. No, this is wrong. The Prophet himself, ﷺ, married his maternal cousin, Zainab bin Jahsh. And Ali ibn Abi Talib married his cousin's daughter, Fatima. May Allah be pleased with them all. So this is permissible in Islam, and it does not by any means contradict or conflict or go against the teachings of Islam. Going back to our subject, Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, was once praying night prayer when the Prophet ﷺ was doing his routine. And the Prophet, by the way, and this is what brought the subject to our minds, the Prophet went to his daughter Fatima and to Ali ibn Abi Talib, and they found them lying down on the ground. So he said, don't you pray night prayer? And Ali said, well, the souls are at the hands of Allah. Whenever he wants, us to wake up, we will wake up and pray. And the Prophet left the house a little bit disappointed and angered by this response and saying that man was mostly arguing. Man argues a lot. Instead of complying to the instruction and say, yes, Prophet, we will do this. We will correct this. O Prophet of Allah, he's saying, the Prophet passed by Abu Bakr's house and by Umar's house. And he heard Abu Bakr reciting the Quran silently, without any voice. And he said, Abu Bakr, why are you doing this? Why are you reciting the Quran silently? He said, O Prophet of Allah, I have made Allah hear me. He's the one I'm talking to. While Umar 
who was reciting the Quran in a loud voice said, O Prophet of Allah, I wake up the sleepy and I kick away the shaitan. And the Prophet said, salam, Umar, go a little bit lower and Abu Bakr, raise a bit your voice. This is all the time we have for today's program. Until we meet next time, fiya manillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ya Nabi, salam alayka. Ya Rasul, salam alayka. Ya Habib, salam alayka. Salawatullah alayka. Ya Nabi, salam alayka. Ya Rasul, salam alayka. Ya Habib, salam Hey.